welcome back everyone so today in this video i will be explaining how you can dual boot your windows 10 or 11 with the kali linux so right now you can see i have a laptop here which is running windows 11 and i will be dual booting this windows 11 laptop with the kali linux right in front of you but before starting we have to make sure that we have a different partition on our windows 11 or windows 10 where we can install the Kali Linux so that there should not be any kind of problem okay so you also need to do the same and right now if I bring up my file explorer so you can see I have only local disk C and there is not any other kind of partition on my computer the other partition that you can see that is my uh, USB pen drive that I will be making the bootable USB okay so in order to create a partition right click on your windows icon and from the suggestion you have to click on disk management now here in the disk management you will find the C drive so what you will have to do you just need to make a right click on it and from the suggestion you have to click on shrink volume so now this will just try to know that how much space is available okay and here it will ask you that enter the amount of space to shrink an MB so now it's all up to you that how much space you want for your Linux drive so here for example I will only take 40 gigabyte so I have to enter the value in MB so I will put somewhere like 40,000 and once it will be done you will find the unallocated space so right click on it choose new simple volume click on next 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 and finish So now you can see that we have successfully created a partition here and if I go back again to my file explorer so you can see here new volume F has been created that contains around 38.9 gigabyte okay so once you have created a partition next you will have to come to this website of Kali the link will be in the description and once you come up here you will find two different options installer images and the virtual machine so you have to click on installer images in the recommended button then scroll down and you will find 64 bit 32 bit and below there are three more options but you have to look for the installer one and click on the download arrow icon and once you click on it the downloading will be now started and it's around 3.9 gigabytes so it will take some time so let it run in the background and once it get completed you will have to come to another website that is Rufus this link also you will be getting in the description and once you come to this website scroll down to the bottom and you will find the latest release and here you have to click on the first link that says Rufus 4.3.exe and once you click on it the downloading will be started once downloaded you have to click on the downloaded file now it will ask you for the update so you have to click on yes and then finally Rufus dashboard this is a small page will now be coming up now here on the very top you will find that in the device section it has automatically detected my USB drive so you have to make sure that right USB has been detected that you want to make Kali Linux bootable usb then below in the boot selection click on the select and now locate to the kali linux iso that you have downloaded select it then click on open and once you click on open it will be scanning and within few seconds it will be all done now you have to simply click on start then click on ok click on yes and you will be getting a final warning that all the data in this USB will be deleted so make sure that you take the data backup and if you don't need it then simply click on yes and now the process will be started of creating a bootable USB for the Kali Linux so now you don't have to do anything simply wait until it's all been done and it may take about 10 to 12 minutes alright so finally the process has been completed and it will say ready so now we can close it and if I now bring up my file explorer so you can see that we have a bootable USB by the name Kali Linux okay now next what we have to do we need to restart the computer in the BIOS mode 
because we have to change the boot priority order and even we have to disable the secure boot okay so what you have to do right click on the windows icon and from the suggestion click on settings now once the setting comes up in the system you have to scroll down and you will find the recovery option so click on recovery and here you will find the advanced startup so click on restart now then click restart now again and the computer will now be loading up and restarting in the advanced option so once the advanced option comes up here you have to click on troubleshoot then go to advanced options and then you have to look for UFI firmware setting so click on it and the computer will now be loading up in the BIOS mode so now once you come in the BIOS mode depending on your manufacturer the BIOS mode can be different so you will have to go into the security section and you have to find the secure boot option so once you get it just tap on it click on it and make sure it's been disabled if it's already been disabled then you don't have to do anything but it's been enabled then you will have to disable it once done you have to go into the boot section and from the boot priority you have to choose the bootable pen drive that you have recently created so that the next time when the computer is start up it can start with the pen drive so once you have selected you have to press the F10 key restart the computer and the next time when the computer gets restarted you will be getting this kind of Kali Linux installation screen now here it will give you different option like graphical install install advanced option so we will be going with a graphic install so click on the first option now here you have to select a language so select English then you have to click on continue choose the keyboard layout and finally the installation will be started it will be scanning the installation media loading additional components so it may take some time okay next you might be getting a screen that says if you have such media available now insert it and continue so you have to select here no then click on continue and now you might be getting a message that network auto configuration failed in case if it asks you to connect your network then you can bypass it we can do it that later on right now here you have to just click on continue then it says retry network configuration so i will again select do not configure the network at this time as we can do it uh, once the installation is completed now it will ask you the host name so keep it as kali only then it will ask you the user account name that you want for your computer so just type the username that you want so i will type crown and then i will click on continue now it will ask the password so i will type a simple password like one two three four five i will re-enter it one two three four five and then click on continue now it will ask the location so you can keep this to eastern only then click on continue and again the installation will be started now this all overall procedure takes some time so you will have to wait here okay and have some patience okay now you will be getting to this kind of a screen that says guided and give you another option of manual now if you want that there should be only the Kali Linux in this computer in this laptop then you can go with the guided option but as we are dual booting the computer with the windows so we have to select here manual so select the manual option click on continue and now here we have to go with the partition so now this part is very important okay right now you can see i have 41.9 gigabyte this is the partition that we manually created so it's showing up over here and below that 113.9 gigabyte that is my windows partition where my windows 11 has been installed so you need to carefully find the one that you have manually created a partition but now what you have to notice here that in front of 41.9 gigabyte where we have to install the Kali Linux in front of it it says basic data extension 4 so we have to delete and make it a free space okay so what you will have to do you need to select the partition 
where you want to install the Kali Linux. Select it, click on continue and then choose here delete the partition. Click continue and once it's been deleted now you can see it says 41.9 gigabyte free space. Again select it, click on continue. Now here you have to choose automatically partition the free space. Click on continue. Choose all file in one partition. Click continue. Then click finish partitioning and write changes to this. Keep this to selected. And again finally click on continue. Now it will say write changes to disk. So you have to click on yes and click on continue. So the partition formatting will now be started. So now here it will take a lot of time, probably half an hour or more than that. So now here you have to keep some patience and wait until it's all been done. And I will get back to you once it's all been completed. So once it will be done, it says installation is complete and it says please choose continue to reboot. So now what you have to click, you just have to click on continue that is on the right hand corner. So now it says finishing the installation and now you will have to remove the bootable USB that you have connected to this computer. Remove it and then restart the computer again. And the next time when the computer will come up, you will find this kind of a screen that says Kali Linux advanced option and windows boot manager so now every time when you will start your computer you will be getting this kind of a screen and where if you want to use the kali linux then you have to click on the kali linux if you want to use your windows 11 or windows 10 then you will have to click on windows boot manager so let me quickly show you both of them first i will click on kali linux and you can see the kali linux screen is now loading up and now it will ask you for my user account name and password. So I will just simply type it and then I will click on login. And now it's coming up. Finally, it will give us the Kali Linux desktop. And here it goes. So now we are inside the Kali Linux. We are ready to go. We are ready to use the Kali Linux machine. OK, so you if you want to open anything, you can open the file system. So everything is working absolutely perfect. Alright, now let's see that how you have to use the windows on the same computer on the same laptop. So let me quickly restart now. And once it restarted, again you will be coming to the same page. Now this time I will choose Windows Boot Manager. And hit the enter key. And Windows 11 is up now and it will be asking for my password. So I will simply type my password. And here is my Windows 11 desktop now. So this is how you have to dual boot your Kali Linux and your Windows 10 or 11 and use both the operating system in one single computer. So that's all guys. Hopefully you will find this video helpful. And if yes, do not forget to like and subscribe and I see you in the next video. Bye bye.